The rest of New Zealand will move to level one from 11.59 p.m. tonight. Well, hello and welcome to this Business New Zealand Policy Roundtable for Monday the 21st of September. I'm Grant Walker. Well, both National and Labour have released policies in the lead-up to Election Day on October the 17th. On Friday, National promised temporary massive tax cuts, which it says will put $3,000 in the back pocket of middle New Zealanders. If elected, the party would lift the bottom, middle and top tax thresholds in a bid to let Kiwis keep more of what they earn. Well, then on Saturday, Labour promised to double minimum sick leave entitlements for workers to 10 days a year and raise the minimum wage to $20 an hour. Well, Business New Zealand has released its election manifesto, which shows the needs of businesses based on a survey of over 1,000 businesses across the country. Now, the top three things on its list is a focus on the economy. Businesses say economic well-being should be the country's priority right now. A plan for reopening the border is also paramount. They want to see the border open safely as soon as possible. And most want to see the next government spending on significant infrastructure to boost economic recovery. Joining me to discuss business sentiment in the Canterbury region is Canterbury Employer Chamber of Commerce CEO Leanne Watson. Leanne, I want to start by asking how businesses are feeling in the South. It's been a strong recovery since April in Canterbury and on the West Coast, um, with economic growth operating at really similar levels to the same period last year. So the scale of the impact of COVID on the Canterbury economy is generally in line with the impact on New Zealand on average. Um, we've certainly seen some positive movements in July, which were predominantly um, from the manufacturing activity and um, retail card spend, which were up 23% actually and 9% for New Zealand and 22% and 9% for Canterbury in July 2020. So, you know, certainly some positive signs uh, for the region and actually August is tracking to be pretty similar, even under obviously the escalation of alert levels. And of course, uh, alert level one will make a big difference to the South Island. Yes, absolutely. I mean, we know that um, being an alert level two, um, that has had an impact on uh, on the South Island. Uh, again, you know, some of the impacts are more widely felt by uh, hospitality, retail, etc. Um, so getting back to alert level one will certainly provide the opportunity for them to go back to a, 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 the new normal business environment. Uh, we're not at zero yet, so there is still some, uh, some, um, I guess, some limitations. And until we've got those borders open, you know, we, we're missing the tourists, uh, of course, but it will enable us to see hopefully more uh, domestic tourism uh, across the South Island, uh, particularly with the school holidays coming up. Well, speaking of tourism, uh, the business view for the 2020 election, the seven things for business has been released, including one of those is reopening the border as soon as possible. Yet um, the CEO of Air New Zealand spoke to media in Australia over the weekend uh, saying that it's not going to happen before March next year at the very earliest. What's your reaction to that? Yeah, it's pretty, uh, pretty challenging, I guess, for you know, anyone involved uh, in this sector. And, uh, you know, while it's pretty disappointing to hear that, I certainly understand the huge challenges that they face as a sector. Uh, but I think what we do need to do is we need to have a really clear plan on exactly uh, what we need to do to get ourselves prepared so that we can open the border in a safe and staged way. Uh, because until such time as we start getting more people through the border, we're going to continue to be significantly impacted in some of those sectors that we mentioned earlier. You know, hospitality, the tourism sector, international education, you know, the events industry. Uh, you know, these are the sectors that just continue to be significantly impacted by COVID. And until we get the borders open, um, that's not really going to change uh, anytime soon. You're hoping to, at least going through some of those uh, seven, cut regulation and build skills. Yeah, so, I mean, you know, cutting regulation is all about understanding the impact of, I guess, more the accumulative uh, regulation that we are seeing. I mean, um, in the last three years, we have seen a number of new pieces of legislation. And while business as a whole can probably deal with individual pieces of uh, legislation, what has a huge impact on small business in particular is the cumulative effect of all of those new pieces of legislation. So it's really important that 
you know, regardless of who's in government, we make sure that any new piece of reg regulation, um, that the impact of that is measured on small business before it's put in. So, you know, rather than keep adding, what can we stop doing? And how can we get a more consistent approach across both local and central government on some of the regulations uh, that we are seeing uh, imposed upon um, business? And how do we get to a point where central government are seen as an enabler for small business. So, you know, this is what it's all about. The bottom line is we want government to focus on creating policies and processes um, that make them an, an enabler for business rather than putting up barriers for business. And number seven is stay ambitious for sustainability. And a lot of people might think, well, that's difficult in these times. But, but again, these are seven things. And you've got to look, look forward, I guess, these days, don't you? And sustainability is the word of the moment. Yeah, look, I mean, certainly, you know, before COVID, um, it was certainly the word of the moment. And it's important not to lose sight of that, because actually the sustainability issue and the environmental issues have not gone away. So this is more about um, just picking that conversation back up, making sure that we've got one eye on the future, because it's really easy when you're going through crisis to actually be really reactive. Uh, and often decisions made in the times of crisis are not necessarily the best, best decisions for the longer term view. So it is important to keep one eye on the future. Um, it is also important, however, to recognise that uh, the impact of COVID um, has changed the order of things and probably changed the priority and importance of some things for some sectors. So, you know, we've got a, uh, an opportunity in front of us as a country um, who's responded well to COVID. Uh, the opportunity will really only be realised um, as to how we respond now, how we move forward from uh, the current situation that we're in, and that requires some really careful thinking. Uh, you know, we, we've heard um, several times that this is a one in 100 year event uh, that we find ourselves in, and that's going to take some, you know, some really um, brave and courageous conversations, some innovative thinking, and acting and doing things differently. Um, so that means that we've got to make sure. Um, if we do all those things well, we think differently, we reposition uh, the, the, the regions and this country as a whole differently, we will realise the opportunities and see some opportunities that come out of the, uh, the back of COVID. All right. Well, uh, of course, with the election coming up, both Labour and National over the weekend are releasing policies that will certainly affect business. Let's start with the Labour Party. Uh, they're talking about sick leave for some who don't already have it from five days to ten and uh, also minimum pay going up. Now, they indicated that was going to happen anyway, so that's probably not the surprise. What about the sick leave? Uh, look, I think that there's a number of things that were in that um, release over the weekend um, that I would like to make some comments on. The first thing is that, uh, you know, we talked before about us being in a one in 100 year event, so that does require different thinking and to take um, a bit of a, a stock take of where we're currently up to and what some of those um, things that were released, whether or not it's appropriate to do so right here, right now. Um, you know, the sick leave five to 10 days, you know, many businesses um, are well and truly providing more than five days now. Um, for small business, this could be a signal, however, that it's yet another cost that they have to face at an extremely difficult time. So I think we need to be aware of that and aware of the message that it may send to small businesses who are already struggling who may just find that this is, you know, the, the straw that breaks the camel's back. Um, so for, for a lot of small business, um, they're doing this now. For a lot of big business, they're doing it now. So I would ask the question whether or not um, legislating it is the right thing to do. Uh, I think the minimum wage, again, um, at a time where businesses are really feeling the, um, the pinch, and you know, in certain sectors it's really tough, and often in some of those sectors where the minimum wage probably is more prevalent, they are the very businesses that are actually really hurting right now in the hospitality retail sectors. So, you know, I think um, some reflection on whether or not the time to increase the minimum wage in April next year would have been useful. Um, we all want to increase the minimum wage when the time is right, but whether or not the time is right right now, or certainly in April next year, I think would um, be something that I would question. And the Nats uh, think the time is right to have a temporary, and I'll say it is because it's very temporary, uh, quite a large tax um, relief package that'll put uh, the average middle income earner, will give them an extra $3,000. Mm. Look, that's it's certainly a different approach, and I think one of the things that um, clearly they're trying to do is stimulate the economy. Um, we know stimulating the economy is very helpful, um, but we also need to understand at what cost uh, that might come to some of the other core services 
and whether or not they can continue to make sure that they are investing in our infrastructure and our core services. Um, one of the things that's really important to do is to give businesses the confidence to grow and to make good investment decisions. And with uncertainty uh, comes a lack of um, businesses actually choosing to invest, um, whether that be in growing their business by employing more people, buy new plant and equipment, um, or investing in research and development. So I think anything that um, provides the opportunity to stimulate our economy, give confidence and certainty for businesses to make good investment decisions is what we're looking for from, um, from the political parties. Thank <laughs> you.